Hey, fellas, thank you so much for staying a little bit later than everybody else. I think we did our children at 6 o'clock. We did our ladies at 6.30, uh, and then our lesson here at 7. And so I appreciate your patience. I appreciate you joining us, especially uh, letting my wife speak to your wives and uh, mothers and, and daughters and those kinds of things. And I, I like to speak to you, men. I like to speak to the young men. I like to speak to our older men. Uh, I like to speak to our fathers. I like to speak to our husbands. Uh, I want to speak to young men uh, that are coming up in the faith, that you're young, young teenagers uh, at this point, and uh, I want to talk to you tonight about an unbelievable story in the Bible. And the reason I'm going straight to the Bible tonight is because the Bible is what we need. Years ago, I heard this phrase, America needs a revolution back to the Bible. Uh, and I, I agree with it wholeheartedly. Uh, we've got a lot of people that want revival. We've got a lot of people that talk about revival. But, but what I see is a lot of people going away from the Word of God, uh, not preaching the whole gospel, not preaching Christ crucified, not preaching uh, the, the things that need to be passed on to the next generation of Christians if the faith is going to be earnestly contended for. And so, men, I come to you tonight in a very serious spirit. Uh, I don't come to you goofing tonight. I'm not playing tonight. I'm, I don't have any papers up here. I don't have any jokes for you. Uh, I've got a serious message for you. Your time is precious. My time is precious. I want to go spend time with my family this evening. And uh, I know that you want to spend time with your family. And so we're going to get right to it. I want you to take your Bible, if you will, this evening and turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. I would say to you, 1 Kings chapter 18 is one of the most important chapters, I believe, in the entire Old Testament. Because at a time when Israel was at its most wicked, at a time when Israel was under the rule of a king named Ahab with a wife named Jezebel, wouldn't you love to have a wife named Jezebel? Uh, I think sometimes we see wives whose names should be Jezebel, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I am thankful for a faithful wife. I can't imagine Ahab and Jezebel, this power couple uh, in the land of Israel that was just destroying the things of God and, and worshiping false gods. And a man, one man stood up and said, enough. Uh, this is not right. Now, I'm not saying he was the only believer. I'm not saying he was the only follower of God. Uh, I'm not saying he was the only one that, that uh, kept commandments or was a good person. But there was one person when everything was down, there was one person that rose up and stood up and said, enough, enough of the wickedness, enough of the uh, goofing around, enough of, uh, of choosing which side when it's convenient, uh, stop crying out to God because uh, the enemy's coming. And, and, and Elijah stood up and said, this is wrong. This is not how the worshipers of God, this is not how the followers of the Almighty God are supposed to live. And so Elijah comes after uh, promising Ahab there'd be no rain for three years, uh, and, and so that promise is coming true, and now it's culminating. The entire uh, clash of three years of famine and, and drought uh, now Ahab wants a meeting, and Elijah comes to him and says, we're going to meet on Mount Carmel, and he says in verse number uh, 17 of chapter 18, would you pick it up there with me, men? Look at your Bibles there. Uh, show your family the importance of the Word of God. Uh, take possession of it tonight. Look at it. If you have your iPhone out, make sure that they understand you're looking at the Word of God right now and the seriousness of that matter. And so look at verse number 17, if you would, tonight. It says, and it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah... That Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that we have that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. And thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the Groves, four hundred which eat at Jezebel's table, 850 prophets against one. So Ahab sent all unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And so now there's a crowd. There's 851 people on the mountain, and there's, uh, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. The Bible says all the children of Israel were warned and shown that this was going to happen. And now they've come to this place, 
and said that Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together into Mount Carmel. And then it says, Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? That word opinions is a unique word. It's not a, today I have this opinion about, uh, about this restaurant, and I have this opinion about, it's not saying that. It's talking, this opinion is a lifestyle. It is a, uh, I'm choosing this life, and I'm choosing this life. Listen, if you are a Christian, you should have a biblical worldview. There are people that have a humanistic worldview. There are people that have a, uh, an atheistic worldview. Uh, there's a people that have materialistic worldviews. We should have a biblical worldview. That means we should see everything that is happening around us through the eyes of God's Word. Because God's Word shows us it is relevant as much today as the moment the pen touched the paper and wrote those words. My friend, this evening I have just three quick points for you, as I normally do, but it's not a normal message. Because the first point is this, I'm going to ask you a searching question tonight. Here's the searching question. How long are you going to stand in the middle of what you're supposed to be doing for God? Now listen, man, I'm a man too, and I get it. I understand how hard it is to live in this world and not be of this world. I understand it. I get it. I have technology, I have a computer, I have friends, I have a family, I have children. I realize how hard it is to implement a biblical view on things. But that is what is right. And what Elijah was saying to the children of Israel in this moment, and in these prophets, they might have been so far gone, maybe they they weren't even giving Elijah a moment, but Elijah stood up to the people of Israel, and he knew they knew the Almighty God, and he knew that they knew uh, how great God was, and and they knew uh, how wicked this king was, and how he's taking them towards wickedness. And Elijah looked at them and said, how long are you going to stand in the middle and, and not take sides? How long are we going to try to appease the people around us so we don't offend anybody? And fellas, I, I am not an advocate for uh, being brash and being a jerk and, 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 and all of those kinds of things. I, I even hate it when people get into these competitions on, on social media with their favorite team against somebody else's favorite team. And I hope you die and I hope you, your house blows up. And, and listen, we got to be careful how much in the social media world that we're starting, to, uh, we're starting to put so much opinion out there. We're starting to put so much uh, brashness out there that we're making no effect for Jesus. Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about getting on a Facebook and being a jerk about something. I'm not talking about getting out on Twitter and giving your uh, five points of why this, this political party or that political party. I don't think any of that makes any difference. There are people that God has ordained to, to debate those things and lead those things. We are God's people. And if you are a politician, then go be a politician and be a good Christian politician. But if you are a Christian and you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, we cannot keep on halting between two things here. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. All his ways. That's why you can't get a handle on your finances. That's why you can't get a handle on your children's behavior. That's why you can't get a handle on the trust between you and your wife. That's why you can't get a handle on you and that relationship with the boss. That's why you can't get a grasp on some things in your life that you should have a grasp on because you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You are a follower of Almighty God and you should have the power of God resting on your life and you should be making a difference just by who you are every single day we can't halt between it's a simple question it is a searching question it is a sincere question i'm telling you men tonight i'm asking you that very searching question tonight how long halt you between two lifestyles two allegiances is it jesus christ or satan and he says the next thing it's a simple choice And you say, oh, it's real simple. No, it is a simple choice. It's not always easy to do. It's not always always a smooth road to get there, but it is a simple choice. 
See, we think the enemy is the alcohol and the drugs and the pornography and the computer and the boss and the job and the, and the, and the people over here and social media. And we've got all of these enemies that we've picked out that we want to be mad at and the, the president and the vice president and this person over here and this Democrat. And Listen, they're not the enemy. The enemies are two. There's two choices. There's one enemy, the Bible says, and that is, that is Satan. There's one name under heaven whereby you can be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. It's a simple choice. Here's what Elijah, how Elijah puts it in verse number 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions, two lifestyles, two belief systems, two worldviews, two allegiances? You can't be the ambassador of both. He says, If the Lord be God, follow him. And if Baal, but if Baal then follow him. It's a simple choice. Man, I, I'm not saying, hey, you either follow God or don't come to this church. I'm not saying not to come here and grow. I'm saying let's come into a pack together tonight as men, as Christian men of this church, as single men, as teenage young men, as young adult men, as, uh, as, as uh, older men, as married men, as unmarried men, that we all come together in a pack tonight and we say we are not going to halt between two opinions. We're not halting between two lifestyles. We're not halting between two belief systems. We're not halting between two worldviews. We are Christian. We are going to be Christ-like. And the Bible says it's a simple choice. Then follow God. If he's God, if he's the one you can trust, if he's the one that provides, if he's the one that loves, if he's the one that forgives, if he's the one that saves, if he's the one that redeems, if he's the one that loves you with all of his heart, and he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, then follow him. You can trust him with your kids. You can trust him with your family. You can trust him with that job. You can trust him with where to work. You can trust him what school to go to. You can trust him with your kids. You can trust him with your entertainment. You can trust God with it. And Elijah said, it's a simple choice. He said, I'm going to ask you a searching question. How long hold you between two opinions? But he said, it's a simple choice. It's either God or the world. It's either God or Satan. And I encourage us tonight as men to next time we get to see each other and the next time we're in this room that we look each other in the eye and with an understanding that we are going to be men that are going to follow God. Now, we might mess up. How many mess up? <laughs> I'll be the first to raise my hand. I hope you're raising your hand. Don't be a hypocrite in that living room there. Listen. We all mess up. I'm not talking about messing up. I'm not talking about uh, that besetting sin that got you the other day. I'm not talking about uh, your, your, uh, your failures. I'm not talking about that, that that's pushing you away from God. I'm talking about your entire worldview, your entire belief system, the way that you pick up that Bible in the morning. You search the, the, the things of God, and you search the Scriptures daily if these things are so. Man, we've got to get to prayer We've got to get before the throne of God. We've got to get serious about these things. It's a searching question, isn't it? Am I just going to follow God? Am I going to just choose the way of God? Am I just going? It's a simple choice. Am I going to just do this? Man, I pray for you. I know it's not easy, men. But I pray for you to make that simple choice today and say, God, you have all of me. You have all of my heart. You have all of my mind. You have all of my, my, my strength. You have all of my being. You have all of my health. You have my family. You have my, you have my career. You've got everything, God. I give it all to you. I trust you with it. I'm, I'm tired of trying to figure this out and figure that out. Now I'm going to fix this, and I'm going to get myself out of debt. No, I'm talking about just going to all in with God. And lastly, Elijah would say here, he, he, makes it a, a, he makes a very a very simple call. He says there's a, a searching uh, question. There's a simple choice, but it's also a simple call. He says in verse number uh, 24 there, he said, and, ye, ye, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. And the God that answereth by fire. You say, what, where are we going with this? What, what, why are we making this pact? So that God will answer by fire. By results, 
by people coming and getting saved, by the waters of baptism being stirred in the church once again, by people being invited and loved and have compassion on people making a difference, searching for those ones that are nearest hell, and the Bible says, and so has by fire. Sometimes, men, it's not easy. There should be no, there should be no doubt after this night who you're going to follow. What lifestyle you and your realm of influence are going to live. May God help us, men, to be serious about these things. You say, why, why the urgency tonight? Listen, could you tell me a month and a half ago that we'd be all sitting in our homes and, and everybody getting 30 million people out of jobs a month and a half ago? I'm telling you, men, you don't know how close the coming of the Lord is. The, the economy was going up, and the spirit of America was going up, and the churches are going up, and then God puts it pff, all to a halt. And God has ordained this time, and, and, and I don't mean that he's ordained this virus to move, but he's ordained the moment uh, of standing still. He's ordained that government to have us stand still so we can figure these things out, and, 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 and that uh, that a month and a half ago doesn't seem like a possibility. All I'm saying to you is it could be the end of times right now. It could be the end of times tomorrow. It could be the end of times a year from now, five years from now, 50 years from now. I'm asking you, what are you leaving behind? Are you leaving behind a legacy of faith, of strength, of love, of care, of kindness, of wisdom, of compassion? of encouragement, edification, of truth, that no matter what, you stood for the Lord. Let us see a great harvest come to the kingdom of God in the next days. And I ask you to pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in this church. Man, we've got some serious thing. I think of Ed Sarah dealing with this bone marrow cancer and it's in remission but they've got to do a transplant it's going to progress pray for ed sarah man would you pray for elizabeth evans she has got serious health issues and has major surgeries continuing uh, in the future here and i want you to pray for bill and elizabeth evans bill's on the front lines of making parts for the coronavirus and so pray for bill and elizabeth evans if you would please lift these families up in prayer. Uh, Ken James and, and his mom, his mom continues to need prayer. I think of Raven, he just got home, he's still doing rehab, still uh, trying to get stronger, continue to pray for Raven. I think of some of our older folks, no necessarily deep sicknesses or anything, but would you pray for God to protect them, continue to put a hedge about our prime timers and those most susceptible. Thank you for your prayers for my family, the, the text, the calls, they're very, they're so kind. Some stopped by the yard the other day, some stopped by the office a few times. I'm doing a little bit of counseling here and there, so would you pray for my health and just make sure that I'm uh, going the right direction there? And I love you. I love your families. And I, I thank you for giving me the liberty in your life that when you started watching this and heard the urgency of my voice, I, I pray that you didn't turn it off. Uh, I'm thankful you stuck to this moment. I'm thankful that you let me say hard things sometimes that not necessarily we got a big problem or we got rampant sin in the church. But it is time to go from normal Christianity and rise up in this day and take it to another level. And I don't know what that level means. I, I'm not saying we're going to start a national revival. I don't know that. I just know I need revival. I just know that I need revived men. I know that I, the people that I'm around and, the pe and my family, I need my family revived. So would you pray with me for revival? Would you spend a day maybe this week and fast? I can't do a whole day, and I know some of your health doesn't allow you to do a whole day uh, because of your health. And would you, would you skip a meal or two meals? pray for revival pray for these families in our church that need a touch of god on their lives and healing them the great physician would heal them and man i miss your families i miss the children i miss being around the church i miss the activity i miss uh i miss people stopping in all week i miss the students uh, this is 80 something students every day i miss them and i'm so uh anxious to get things started but men let me just give you a one minute update I met with our deacons last night. I'm crying. What in the world? Like, men need to see me cry. We need to cry for revival, though. We really do. But, men, I met with our deacons last night and our pastoral staff, and we begin to assess how are we going to phase back in and how are we going to start uh, services. And we're going to give you very detailed uh, instructions on that. 
in the next few days, uh, and I don't want to, I just want to make sure we have a plan and exactly what we're going to do. We're probably going to start with some drive-in services, uh, and then we'll probably phase into the building and, and separate people in the gym and in here and those kinds of things. And so there's lots of ideas out there, nothing in stone because we don't have a date of when we're allowed for sure to uh, start meeting with what we would feel like in this room needs to be at least 150 to 200 people uh, to have services uh, normal. So uh, we'll, we'll adapt and we'll, we'll phase in. We're not being persecuted. I'm still talking to you. There's no, uh, there's no freedom taken away for uh, the ability to get this message to you tonight. So we love you and, and pray with me. Uh, as soon as this turns off, would you just spend five or ten minutes in prayer for these things? And of course, ask God for revival. And if he keeps you on your knees for a few extra minutes, just stay there and say, God, I, you have me. You have my family. You have everything. It's a simple, it's a simple choice. It's a serious call. Look, if, if, if God is God, then follow him. And let the God that answereth by fire. Let's see the results of what we're going to start on this night. Good day, man. I love you. Have a great night. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.